So the simple pendulum theory is the idea that we have an object starting at an angle and it's attached to a string being released and then it's at a constant motion due to gravity being the only force applied to it because there's no friction. So these are the values and the formulas we're going to be using to derive the simple pendulum. The motion is constant. We're going to assume that the energy used to establish this motion is also going to be constant. Now the two energies that are going to act are potential energy and kinetic energy. And the reason why we have U max for potential energy is because when the pendulum starts, it's going to get to a certain position right here at the very end before it goes back. And that displacement is going to be the maximum displacement. And when it's at maximum displacement, velocity will equal zero. So the only energy acting is going to be potential energy at this point. And the reason why we're saying velocity equals zero is when you're going to let go of the pendulum, it's going to increase in velocity until it gets to this point. And then as it's going up here, it's going to decrease until it gets to zero. And same thing for k max. K max, we're assuming, uh, is when velocity is going to be maximum, but displacement is going to be equal to zero. So the only energy acting on this part of the motion is going to be kinetic energy. Saying this, now that we've established that, when the object that is hung by the string is moving, it's going to move from kinetic energy to potential energy and then back to kinetic energy. And as we said before, E or energy total is going to be constant. The only way energy is going to be constant in this motion is if potential energy and kinetic energy are equal, which we get by this. And if we write both of their formulas, we get this expression. When we solve for V max, we're going to get this expression and we know from another equation that v max equals 2 pi fa um, if we solve for f which is frequency here we're going to get the following equation now frequency is going to be the inverse of t which is the period t is going to be also the inverse of f so when we solve for that equation we get this expression okay now k for pendulum motion is mg over L. And if we plug in this expression into K in this equation, we get that the period from peak to peak equals 2 pi square root of L over G, which is the equation that we're going to use. So this is the simple pendulum equation we'll be using. For T equals 2 pi times the square root of L over G, where T equals the period from peak to peak in seconds and L is the length of the chain in meters and G is free fall acceleration. We use the equation by plugging in 1.778 meters for the length of the chain and then 9.8 meters per second squared for G. And the total for T in seconds is 2.68. It was obtained from a angular position or theta against time graph done internally in the app in which the angle or theta was the angle between the chain of the swing and the vertical pole that was going down. And this angle was changing as the motion of the pendulum is changing. Which is the angular velocity versus time graph shown right here. The first point one is where angular velocity is zero. This is when the swing is being held. Two is shown where the velocity is increasing as the swing is released. Three is the midpoint on the pendulum and the max peak of the graph. Four is just when angular velocity decreases and five is when the swing reaches, reaches the other end and is zero at the angular velocity again. As the pendulum goes back from point 0.5 to point 0.1, the angular velocity is increasing and then decreasing in the negative so direction. So the angle of the peaks were found by using the angle meter app, which will be shown in the next clip. So for the percentage error of the longer chain length, we use this equation and found 0.746 percentage So for error. percentage error for the shorter chain, we found 1.41%. Um,